The following operator training video on Hobart models 5212 and 5212F meat saws is a supplement to the instructions manual that came with your Hobart 5212 or 5212F meat saw. If you have any questions concerning operation, please consult your manual. Your Hobart 5212 or 5212F meat saw is constructed and designed to give long, satisfactory service, providing it is properly used and maintained. This training video will cover the controls of the meat saw, its operation, cleaning, sanitizing, and maintenance. Safety devices incorporated in this saw must be in their correct operating positions any time the saw is in use. The switch knob is located here. Pulling the knob turns the saw on, and pushing the knob turns the saw off. Before turning the saw on, adjust the upper guide assembly by grasping the knob and sliding the guide up or down as necessary to keep the guide as close to the work as possible. All doors and inspection covers must be in their operating position closed while the saw is running. When making several cuts of the same thickness, set the gauge plate by turning the adjusting knob. A reference scale on the table indicates thickness of cut. If the gauge plate is not needed and interferes with work, it may be moved out of the way. Lift the adjusting knob, disengaging the teeth, and slide the gauge plate to the rear of the machine or raise the gauge plate to a vertical position and slide to a convenient position. The adjustable gauging pin permits you to slide the gauge plate out of the way and then back to the original setting at a later time. To set the pin, adjust the gauge plate to the desired position by turning the hand knob. Loosen the gauging pin hand knob and slide the pin against the gauge plate support stop. Tighten the gauging pin hand knob. The pusher plate is used to hold meat against the gauge plate when slicing short ends. A slot in the pusher plate and a stop on the right flanged end of the carriage is provided for proper positioning of the pusher plate. By holding the pusher plate handle with your right hand, a safe distance from the blade will always be maintained. When not in use, store the pusher plate on the underside of the carriage support. Place the product on the carriage and turn the saw on by pulling the switch knob. Stand in front of the machine Lean lightly against the scalloped front of the carriage. Move the carriage to the left, passing the product through the blade at a steady and uniform rate. Use your left hand to remove and stack product as it is cut. Never reach in front of the blade. Always reach around the left side or in back of the saw blade. On the return stroke, pull the item back and away from the saw blade. If locked carriage operation is desired, align the right edge of the carriage with the right of the table. Turn the spring-loaded carriage until it snaps into place. Warning, disconnect the electrical power and place a tag at the disconnect switch indicating the circuit is being worked on before cleaning this machine. The 5212 and 5212F meat saws must be thoroughly cleaned and sanitized before the first use, after each day's operation, any time it is not used for an extended period of time, and before being put into operation after an extended downtime. The meat saw can be cleaned with high-pressure cleaning equipment, or it can be disassembled and its components cleaned in a sink. In either case, a neutral pH cleaning agent mixed per the supplier's instruction should be used. After washing, thoroughly sanitize, rinse, and dry the saw and all components. Disassemble the carriage by releasing the carriage lock. Turn the L-shaped carriage stop and remove the carriage. Rotate the gauge plate to the raised vertical position. 
Release the tablecloth. Lift and pull the table to the left until the tongue is clear of the slot. Tilt the table on its side, blade side edge up, and remove the table from under the saw head. To remove the head and base doors, open them and lift them straight up and off their pins. Remove the scrap pan. Swing this nylon guard up and lift the wiper assembly. To remove the blade for cleaning, turn the tension adjustment hand wheel to release the tension on the blade. Remove the blade. Loosen the upper wiper unit hand knob several turns. Bump the knob with the palm of your hand to free the stud. Remove the hand knob and remove the upper wiper unit. Finally, open the pulley retaining latches and slide the upper and lower blade pulleys from the shafts. The upper and lower pulleys are interchangeable. All removed parts can be cleaned and sanitized in a sink. Clean and sanitize the machine, starting at the top and working down. Remove any large scraps of product and place in the scrap tail. Dip a clean cloth in the detergent solution, wring it out, and thoroughly wash each component. Use the brush for hard-to-reach or stubborn soil. Use care to thoroughly clean the interior corners of the pulling housings. Using a second clean cloth in the rinse water, thoroughly rinse each component immediately after washing. For sanitizing, soak a clean cloth in the sanitizing solution. Bring the cloth out so that when wiping parts, they are left moist but not dripping wet. Re-soak and wring out the cloth frequently. Use the spray bottle to sanitize hard-to-reach spots by spraying a light mist on all surfaces. Do not wipe surfaces dry after sanitizing. Allow adequate time for the machine to dry. Prior to reassembly, a light coating of tasteless mineral oil should be applied to all surfaces. Reassemble the saw in reverse order. First the upper and lower pulleys. Then the upper guide and guard assembly. Reinstall the saw blade so that the blade teeth point to the right and down. Adjust the blade tension to its proper setting by turning the tension adjustment hand wheel to the right until three starts to show in the tension indicator. Rotate the upper pulley a few turns by hand until the blade centers itself on the pulleys. Then turn the tension adjustment hand wheel slowly to the right until the indicator registers between four and five at eye level. This is the best operating tension for the blade. Check the blade backup blocks. Clearance between backup blocks and the blade should be approximately one thirty-second of an inch. Now reinstall the rear wiper assembly. The front wiper and guide assembly, the upper pulley wiper, and the base and head doors. The table is reinstalled by placing it on the base and moving it to the right. Then move the table back to the left so the support rod is hooked on the stationary clamp. Four table rests support and align the table underneath. When the table is in proper position, latch the table clamp above the left support rod. Now reinstall the blade cup. And finally, the carriage by holding the carriage so the center bearings underneath are aligned with the carriage guide. Warning, disconnect the electrical power and place a tag at the disconnect switch indicating the circuit is being worked on before beginning any maintenance procedure. Little lubrication is required. All high-speed shafts have pre-packed bearings. A small amount of grease is required in the six ball bearing rollers of the carriage. Regularity of lubrication will depend on the amount of use. Frequently apply a few drops of oil to the gauge plate rack, upper blade slide ride, and the pulley shafts. Check to assure that each component moves freely. The changing saw blades disassemble the components as described in the cleaning section of this tape. Reinstall the blade so teeth point to the right and down. This concludes operator training for the Hobart model 5212 and 5212F meat saw. 
To obtain service and parts information concerning these meat saws, contact your local Hobart service office.